Good morning. My name's Lynn Lumsden Green, and this morning we are celebrating 30 years of steampunk. Well, actually, 30 years of steampunk. The name being coined by 1987 by a letter to a magazine that was a joke. Um, name steampunk it was meant to play off cyberpunk, but Mr. Jetta. I'm probably not pronouncing that name correctly because I've never actually heard it pronounced. Um, decided that he needed something to cover what he was writing at the time, which was neo Victorian retro futurism. It had been around a while. It wasn't actually, you know, 1987 when steampunk first started, but it's 1987 when steampunk was first named. Now, I love steampunk. I love steampunk. So I'm going to do this morning to start off our celebrations a quick and rough basic about Australian steampunk authors. Now I'm a little bit nervous as you probably noticed because I actually don't like talking in public but as a steampunk enthusiast, I got to step up and be brave. So, Steampunk Authors by Lynn Lumsden Green. What is steampunk? Well, I've already given you one very quick and rough definition which is oh gosh neo Victorian retro futurism when I'm trying to explain it to people who don't know what those words mean I generally say something along the lines of oh how about thinking if Jules Burns was writing his stuff today or HG Wells that would be considered steampunk. Well, everybody's heard of H.G. Wells, everybody's heard of Jules Verne's, and they go, oh, so it doesn't mean tipping little old ladies out of, you know, their wheelchairs. No, punk does not mean that. So it's just a literary genre. It started off as a science fiction genre. It's still basically a science fiction genre, but it's also alternative history, historical, it's got a little bit of fantasy in there as well. So, you know, it covers just a little bit of everything. It's a very modern genre because it does that, do that mashups. Um, I prefer to write in it myself for the simple reason that, one, I love gadgets, love them, love science, yay, science, and I generally like science fiction. So we put all those together and you've got steampunk. So next on our list of wonderful things that we're discovering today. Excuse me while I cough. <coughs> Australian steampunk authors. And this is our list that we'll be going through. Now all of those people, if they're not actually Australian, are from um, based around Australia and do most of their writing in Australia. So people like Scott Westerfeld is based half the time here and half the time in the US. So let's get started on this exciting adventure of Australian steampunk authors. Oh, this is not a complete list, but this is a robust selection of authors who have had some success in publishing books. Wanting to be fair, there are self-published authors as well as traditionally published authors on this list. My goal today is to introduce new readers to the steampunk genre as well as celebrating the very best in Australian creativity. Scott Westerfeld. Now, as you can see, there's a link to his webpage there. Scott wrote a tr trilogy of exceedingly exciting steampunk books. They were written um, a little while ago, so they're not as easy to get in your bookshop, but you can order them in and you can get them as eBooks. 
Now, Scott is probably more famous for writing the Ugly series. Now, they are a young adult book. I would say that these books are also basically aimed at young adult, but by the same token, I don't think any adult can read these books and not enjoy them. So I would recommend them really highly. Personally, the Manual of Aeronautics, if you're into gadgets, that's the one to get. If you're a big reader, I'd get them all. Well, and these books were illustrated by Keith Thompson. Now, Keith Thompson's exceedingly well regarded, but I also his illustrations are a heck of a lot of fun. Susan Ruth. Now, Susan is not a traditionally published author. She goes through the self-publishing, though she is attempting to get her books published in traditional manner. Now, she's been in the process of writing an, a series based around an England that's got some really interesting um, variations on the reality of England. So I don't want to give too much away because I don't know, you know, how she's going to market these books in the future. But as you can see, her covers are superb. Um, she gets her covers done by a guy called Lee O'Connor. I was going to say Lee Connor, which is why I'm glad I wrote it down. And the, there's a fantasy element in this, these books with, that I find really exciting and interesting because without the fantasy elements, the steampunk elements wouldn't be so exciting. I, what I really like about her books is that she, she really um, puts the science and technology centre stage without them overwhelming the characters. Her characters are wonderful. So I would really recommend these books. Now, unfortunately, this is an author I've only just recently come across, so I haven't had a chance to read her book yet. But from other people who've told me about her, um, oh, and there's her website to link there on there as well. Um, she's doing a steampunk series based around the antics of Evangeline. Now, she aspires to be a world famous inventor. I like that concept straight away because, well, why can't girls be world famous inventors? But the other thing is, is that this is based in Melbourne. So it's not only a steampunk story based in Melbourne, but it's also a steampunk story written by somebody who was born in Tasmania so and now lives in Melbourne. So she knows exactly what's going on. Um, her books are available through Amazon. They're actually aimed at a young adult audience. Um, so they're lo very lighthearted. But again, I'd say her science and devices and everything else would probably interest an adult reader as well. Now, we're coming up to one of my favourite Australian authors. This is probably going to be obvious because I'm in the photo with him. This is Michael Pryor. Now, Michael Pryor is probably the best known, apart from Scott Westerfeld, of all our authors that we've got online today because he wrote The Laws of Magic, which is a series of seven books, and he also wrote The Extraordinaires, which is a duology. Now, strangely enough, I prefer the um, duology over the seven books, though I have to admit the seven books are also right up there with my favourites. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that I really like Michael. Um, as a, He's the most prolific in the steampunk publishing in Australia. Um, his books are available in bookstores and online, as well as his books he's committed to the Australian writer community and the readers in general. So he doesn't just write steampunk, just like Scott doesn't just write steampunk. Actually, very few of the authors that we have here just write steampunk. Um, but on the other hand, they also are exceedingly good authors. Michael's been published in a lot of other languages as well as just English. Um, his French covers for his Laws of Magic books 
was so extraordinarily delicious I would have nearly just bought the series even though I couldn't have read them. Um, he's young adult again but I, again his books are so extraordinarily well written that I don't think there's any adult that couldn't enjoy them. But just of all He's, he, I would say that it's suitable for precocious middle years readers as well because the language in them is never that unsuitable or anything like that. I mean, look, I could rave, 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 rave about Michael. So let's just say go buy his books if you haven't already. Now, this is my other personal favourite you're not supposed to have favourites, but you do. It's Richard Harland. Now, Richard has really, really thrown himself into the steampunk um, aesthetic. He's thrown himself into the steampunk lifestyle. He plays a steampunk guitar. As you can see, he has the most delightful hat on the planet. This hat was inspired by that hat. He is a delightful human being. That's my prejudice showing again. Um, there's his link for his books up there as well. Now, his three books, World Shaker, Liberator and Song of the Slums, aren't the only books that he's written in steampunk. But unfortunately, it's really hard to get your hands on a copy of The Black Crusade because that was written quite a while ago. These ones are still available if you can't get them second hand or you can't get them as ebooks. Start just beating up your friends because I'm sure they've got a copy of his books. He um, is also an academic. He was born in the UK but he moved to Australia and he considered himself completely an Australian these days. I would say my very first steampunk novel that I knew was a steampunk novel was The Black Crusade. But before that I had read other steampunk books. I just didn't know what steampunk was. Now, this is the person who introduced me to steampunk, Ged Mabry. He was the person who actually brought the term and the lifestyle and the aesthetic and the genre to my attention upon which I completely and utterly fell in love. Now he has written one steampunk book but he has a second one which I'm um, actually better reading for him at the moment. He's been waiting for me for quite a while to get back to him with that one. I will be soon. Ged, sorry. But as you can see Ged has fun. Lots and lots of fun. Um, he, he's infamous for his steampunk um, Hello Kitty pink suit and accessories. I love that outfit. Um, he's originally from New Zealand but he's now living and based here in Brisbane. And um, he gets to most of the steampunk events and he is a delightful human being. If you ever get the chance to hear him have a talk about steampunk, just throw yourself in the car and get there because A, he rarely talks in public and B, he is the funniest and most wonderful speaker. Um, his books are rollicking good fun and I mean Honestly, they remind me a lot of the Pulp Fiction books from the, the 1940s where adventure after adventure after adventure and you, you just don't get a chance to take a breath and it's just so much great fun to read. His first book was Into the Storm's Domain. It's hard to get because unfortunately the publisher's gone under. But with luck, um, hunt down a copy. Um, you won't be able to get your hands on mine because I'm not parting for my, with mine for love of money and it's signed to me anyway. But if you, you haven't heard of Ged Mabry, um, I would at this point now, if you want to have any um, influence in the steampunk community, learn his name, find out all about him. Now, this 
person, Lance Vulchin, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly as well, he's recently um, on the short list for the Children's Books Council of Australia for his book, Mechanica, which is a picture book. Now, you might think, oh no, children's books, why would I be interested? Oh my Lord, go out and buy it, just look at the pictures. The story's great, it's a great story, but look at that illustration. He illustrates his own work. He writes and illustrates. Um, it's so good that it's, you know, up for a, a big award, but that's not why I'm recommending it. He also wrote a Critica, which I'm now trying to hunt down. Um, look, picture books is a great way of also looking for gadgets. If, you, if you're a person who wants to do gadget stuff, go for it. Now, this is another Australian author. Now, I'm personally very fond of David because he's a zoologist like me. Um, and he is much more environmentally friendly than I am because, you know, he really, he catches his own food, grows his own food, fixes his own machines, farms, you name it, he can do it. He's a real action man and he writes fabulous books. He lives in Tasmania. Um, his two books that are young adult, but again, as with all young adult books, I don't think young adult makes it to the point that you can't read it as an adult. I know I do. Now, look at those covers. They are just amazing. The books themselves are amazing and they're based in Australia. I mean, Australia gets a really good look in with his books. Um, they're based on an alternative 20th century where it's still Victorian era technology but jazzed up and it's also got a subplot of you can never say this word when I'm nervous about colonization there we go I got it this is um, the main setting is the free state of Westralia now and that's Western Australia if you hadn't already guessed and you can't get much more Australian a setting than Western Australia because that he's made it sort of not just the outback he's put in what the Australia was like in the Victorian era and he it's very well written the settings fabulous the characters are interesting so I can, can't do anything other than recommend those two books Cuttlefish and the Steam Mole now there you go, there's the link if you want those books. Um, I don't know if they're still available in hardcover, but I do believe you can get them as ebooks. If you can get the hardcovers, they're beautiful, so I would. If you kind of guessed, I've, I've got a lot of these books. Now, this is a new author for me. I've only just found out about him recently. He was living in America, but he's Australian and he's back in Australia. It's Leo Champion. And that's his book there. I have not read it, but the people who have tell me it is amazing and I am now in the process of hunting it down. I've got nothing against finding out about new authors and thinking, oh, where were you five years ago? Because that's the beauty of being a good reader. You know, there's always going to be more books. There's always going to be new authors to find. Now, Leo comes across as um, in a steam-driven alternative 1963, the British Empire faces off against the neo-Tsarist Russia in a Cold War over the divided former USA. Now, if that doesn't sound amazing to you, I don't know, you know, what can I do to entice you? But the best thing about it is, is that uh, even though this is his only steampunk novel, he has had other novels published and um, he's back in Australia and he's studying, so I don't know how much time he's got writing. Now, this is touching your nose in on, you can never do it delicately, so I'm going to, there we go. Um, he was born in Sydney, he went to the US to get a college education and now he's back in Australia doing some more furthering of his education. So he's only going to get better, guys, he's only going to get better. 
Felicity Banks. Now, Felicity writes steampunk for young adults. Now, I don't know Felicity very well, and I haven't actually managed to read any of her books yet. But she's a Canberra writer, um, and she does choose your own adventure stories. But her novel, Heart of Brass, which, you know, immediately you know it's got to be steampunk, is the beginning of the Antipodean Queen series and is available in print and digital formats through odysseybooks.com.au. Um, her second book was going to be published through a, a traditional publishing venue, but unfortunately, like Ged, um, recently, his, they both had their published, that same publisher has gone toes up. So we, she's now looking for an alternative. Now, she also writes under the name of Louise Curtis. Now, as you can see, she's not just embraced writing steampunk, she's also embraced the aesthetic. A lot of steampunk authors do. Because, you know, who doesn't look good in steampunk gear? I know I do. Now, I've saved the best for last because, let's face it, you can't get any better than Karen. Now, Karen is the person who reminded me or, or brought it to my attention that today is steampunk coin of the word birthday and that, you know, there was nothing being done to celebrate it. So... I jumped on board. She's the boss. She's in charge today. But this is me supporting her as much as I possibly can because she is a brilliant author. Her books have an Australian feel. Her protagonist is a woman with amazing abilities, brains, beauty, you name it. She's got it and she loves to drive. Who doesn't? I hate driving myself, but... That's only because I get distracted very easily. Um, as you can see, you've got her website. There's also a link up here. But you've got karencarlisle.com. You've got her on Goodreads, Pinterest, Tumblr and Flickr. You can connect to her via Twitter and Facebook. And she's got video and book trailers on YouTube. She was also shortlisted in the Australian Literature Review's 2013 Murder Mystery Short Story Competition and she published her first novella, Dr Jack and Other Tales, in 2015. And as you can probably tell from the picture, she's a keen cosplayer and crafter and she's just an all-around steampunk goddess. Goddess! Okay, now the very last person on this list is me. <laughs> you knew this was coming, come on. So as you can see, there's my contact details. I have not yet had a steampunk novel published, but I've had short stories, not steampunk, but adult fantasy, adult. Most of my stories are adult. The current book, Steampunk Work and Process, that I'm working on and have been for a couple of years was young adult, but it's got sort of aged up. Um, so I'm now calling it an adult novel, but it's also got no sex and very little violence. So you could probably safely say you could give it to a young adult when it comes out. Don't expect it any time soon. I'd say even if I had finished it tomorrow, it wouldn't be published until next year. But if you're looking for it, at the moment it's called The Botanical Adventures of Professor Alice because my main protagonist is a young woman. Now, she's this has got a feminist suffragette discourse, but it's not going to beat you over the head with it. The main thing is it's just her difficulties trying to get stuff done in a culture that's basically patriarchal. Now, the men aren't bad guys. They're just the way the whole society's run. And the bad guys are based loosely on Professor Moriarty 
and his father. So they're not actually Professor Moriarty, but they like to think of themselves as Napoleons of crime. Now, that's my what I have up on my Cog Punk Sting Scribe website on WordPress. I also run Sting Punk Sunday on Facebook, which is where you are now. So you can go have a look at it right now. Sting Punk Sunday. Queensland, Australia, because funnily enough, it's where I was born and brought up. So it's a stay tuned sort of thing. I'm also on Twitter and I'm also on Pinterest. Um, my Pinterest site, strangely enough, is quite obsessed with steampunk. So if you're interested in the aesthetic, I'd go check it out. Now, looking for steampunk books. Not everything labelled steampunk is the real deal, funnily enough. As steampunk has wandered in from the wilderness and into the mainstream, many have hoped, hoped, hopped on board hoping to be caught up in the excitement. To me, steampunk is about a setting that's a science fiction story in a Victor Victorian-like era which doesn't mean it has to be actually in the Victorian era, but it has that feel. It means taking the known scientific advantages of the era and ramping them up several notches. I mean ramping. Go all the way. What would the impact of those advances have on a Victorian-style society? Now, that's what really interests me the most in steampunk, is how human beings react and interact with technology which actually relates back to today because, let's face it, technology is running away at the moment. I love my computer. I love it. So it's not like I don't love all the new gadgets that come out, but I also am really interested in how technology got its start, which was in the industrial era, which is basically Victorian. So are you a science geek? Try reading the work of Jules Verne's, Oscar Wilde, H.G. Wells and Charles Dickens and other Victorian writers. These aren't steampunk books as such, but they are in the same family. If you like steampunk, try these writers if you've already read all these other authors. You can also look for the term gaslight fantasies because most of the action in steampunk prose takes place in the light of gas lamps and gas lanterns. Is diesel punk in there as well? There's a few other clock punk. The name isn't as important as the content, but of course at the moment we're celebrating the name, so run, in, run with it. And if you're in trouble, your lo librarian can always help. Libraries are still important. And there's also plenty of assistance online. If you're really in trouble, feel free to contact me. Steampunk cosplay, because, you know, if you like reading it, you're going to want to dress up in it. Steampunk cosplay is less about spending cash and more about recycling and creativity. Can't sew? That only slows me down, but it doesn't stop me, <laughs> because I can't sew at all. Everything's hand sewing. I am actually getting a sewing machine. This should be interesting. Become a secondhand rose and haunt your junk shops for vintage clothing and bits of clockwork and electronics, old jewellery and anything made out of leather. Leather belts, best thing. These are two different leather belts that I have put together to make a very steampunk looking item of clothing. And steampunk sashes. Wait a oh, that's, there we go. Chains, lots of studs. I'm gorgeous, I know. And getting back to this. Collect old leather belts, collect boots, collect waistcoats and corsets. Oh, and hats. Collect hats. Don't fall into the trap of thinking the Victorian era was drab. That is a misconception caused by the black and white photography of the era. Or sepia, or whatever you want to call it. There were new dyes and colours being invented and discovered all the time. So the hippie era had nothing on the Victorian fashions for lurid colours. I mean, seriously, nothing. 
there are some go online have a quick look at Victorian dresses and you will go oh my god were they color blind why are they putting all those different patterns and stuff together generally comes out really well because you know you only had two dresses so you really made sure that they worked but then there were some people like bowerbirds who just went crazy and put everything onto a dress so last but not least do you want to write steampunk excellent um, you know the world can never have too many steampunk writers or just writers so what should you do first of all I would read a lot read a lot of socks um, steampunk it gives you a very good idea of the different styles because no, steampunk isn't just one style there's lots of different every person who comes to steampunk has their own interpretation and writes in a different way but you should join the Queensland Writers Centre or if you're not in Queensland you should join whatever your local writing centre is um, keep attending conferences because conferences um, is where you get to meet like-minded people who can tell you about authors so things like supernova things like comic con things like genre con which is coming up here in brisbane which is a conference for writers anything that that interests you and is a conference i can't re recommend going too highly it's when you meet your tribe the people that you've always known were out there but never got to meet and suddenly you feel like you're at a family gathering at least I do um, learn grammar and editing as most publishing companies have cut back on staff and now expect writers to have the copy edits and proof of edits doing it themselves uh, you can pay for other people to do this who've got the or if you've got lots of friends who are good readers and writers which is leading me up to joining a writers group writers groups are fabulous I'm in two writers groups um, and I'm also used to be on an online writers group I can't recommend being in a writers group too highly myself I find it very useful because when you get stuck there's always somebody at least you can have a moan to I can't get out of this plot hole oh, I have the same problem blah 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 and you eat chocolate you drink coffee or tea and you can basically socialize and don't think that writers don't socialize we do we love people that's why we write now um, this one might seem particularly obvious read mountains about the Victorian era particularly about scientists and innovations of the era but you'd be surprised how many people don't write an actual story now that's usually where most people go wrong they talk about it they never do it do it right I want more steampunk authors out there for me to read but finally have fun now I hope you've enjoyed this little discussion I've noticed down the side here that there is a bunch of stuff I've now got to read I will be transferring this over to the actual celebration website unfortunately I can't videotape on the website um, but I can here on my own page so I'll be transferring over it will won't be disappearing anytime soon because there was a lot of information there if you've missed anything feel free to ask me and if you do have any questions feel free to ask me now I'm going to sign off now now this is going to look awkward because I'm not 100% sure on how to do this but let's give it a go it's technology by the way I've really enjoyed talking as you can tell I'm a lot less nervous now um, and it was really quite fun that was a PowerPoint I was supposed to do up at Rockhampton earlier this year in that the flooding got in the way and I thought oh isn't that a shame I've done all that research and now I've got no opportunity to to share it but now it's shared on the internet which means the whole world can see it which means all these great Australian authors and look these are I would put Australian authors up against authors anywhere in the world anywhere for, for style substance sheer fun um, and, and it's not 
people have a tendency to think, oh, it's Australian, it's a little bit secondhand or a little bit not quite as shiny as overseas writers. No. Every single one of those books I would gladly put up on an international level and say, blow them away. So, hunt these books down. If you've got any books that you'd like to recommend from Australian authors that I've missed, please share. Now, if you've got any overseas authors, please share. Because, you know, I love reading science fiction and fantasy and even if you, you know, run me up against an author I already know, that doesn't matter. I'm perfectly happy to be, if, if you've enjoyed that book, we can talk about it. So, I'm going to say goodbye now. Love you all. Mwah. There will be further videos throughout the day as this is a day-long celebration of steampunk and I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.